Hey everybody, it's Nick with Triple Nickel Outdoors. Welcome to my table of food. I got about a week and a half left until I leave for the John Muir Trail and I just wanted to go over what my food strategy was and what my resupply is gonna look like for the trail. So this is all the food that I have for the 22 days on my itinerary for the trail. So I got everything laid out and let's just go over a couple of the decisions that I made for what I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat on the trail. So the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to see how many calories a day I'm gonna need in order to keep up with the energy that I'm gonna be outputting each day. I'm gonna be doing roughly 13 to 16 miles over the course of the three weeks. And I think there's around a, a 3000 feet elevation gain average per day. So it's gonna be a pretty hefty workload. But if you go online, there's a bunch of different calorie calculators that you can put in how much energy you're looking to put out per day and it'll generate uh, just an estimate on how many calories you should be intaking. And I think when I put in my numbers, I was around 6,000 calories a day. So to try and carry 6,000 calories a day over the course of three weeks is a pretty hefty task. Well, I looked at a couple different articles about resupply strategies and food strategies, and one that I saw from Andrew Skirka made a lot of sense to me. Uh, he's a pretty avid uh, ultra marathon runner. He guides a bunch of different of these kinds of expeditions. And in his experience, he recommends anywhere from around 2,200 to 2,700 calories a day. So then what I did is I went online and I went to Mountain House and Packet Gourmet. These are two companies that offer dehydrated meals and other dehydrated foods. And I placed a pretty hefty order for a bunch of their products. I've had a bunch of their meals and they've all been pretty good. So I just ended up rolling with those two companies. I got those in and that is going to take up the majority of my dinners and my breakfasts. I ended up getting biscuits and gravy in a big tin and granola and blueberries. So I did a lot of my breakfast with these two things. And for the dinners, I just got a wide variety of things that I thought that I might enjoy. I've had a bunch of their meals and they've all been good. So I ended up getting those meals in the mail. And what I did was I repackaged them into Ziploc freezer bags. What this does is it saves a ton of space from the original packaging that you get. And you could add boiling water straight to the package. So it's, it's, it helps with cleanup because you don't have to keep cleaning out your pot. So after I got done repackaging all those meals, I ended up laying each day out uh, with the breakfast and the dinner. Then from there, in order to simplify the whole process, I knew that I was gonna have certain items each and every day, so I laid those out. I'm gonna have a coffee each day. This is Starbucks via Pike Place. I'm gonna have two of these Goo Energies per day, a Pro Bar meal, and then some sort of a candy bar. This is Almond Joys. I got Snickers and Butterfingers, some other stuff. And then from there, I just filled in the holes for the amount of calories I was gonna need per day with different snacking foods like uh, protein bars and tuna fish. I got some of these single serve peanut butter packs from Justin's. These are like 200 calories for a pack. So I got some of those. Oh, this is great. I only saw peanut butter and jelly in hard or uh, glass containers, but I was at Walmart and they sell it in a plastic container. So this, uh, Eating peanut butter every day would drive me crazy, but the fact that this has jelly mixed in it, it's awesome. So I got that. This is 10 servings, 210 calories per serving. So that I laid out three days in a row with a package of Ritz crackers, uh, the whole sleeve, they become these little mini sleeves, uh, 220 calories for the mini sleeve. So if I have one, two, you know, three days, this will give me lunch for three days. Uh, so that's, that's a really cool find. What else do I got? Oh, a ramen bomb. So this is a package of ramen noodles, one of those instant mashed potato packs. There's four servings for those uh, packages of mashed potatoes. I put uh, one serving in here, so you can get four servings out of a bag. And then I'm planning on cutting up this thing of Spam and throwing it in there. This whole thing is 720 calories, so packs a punch. All right, what else? Uh, oh, this is good. Okay. So let's say you're doing the meals and you got your calories counted out and you're a little bit lighter. You want to add some more calories for the day. You can just add some items to each particular day. First thing I did was this is Nido. You can find it in the Spanish section at your grocery store. This is basically like a 
powdered milk and for a quarter cup, it's 160 calories. So I took like that uh, Mountain House granola that I had. Each bag of these is two servings of that. That's 500 calories plus that scoop of Nido makes it 660 calories. So just a way to kind of beef up each meal. And what else did I do? I bought a big bag of uh, black bean flakes. They're re dehydrated black beans. And for a third cup of this, it's 130 calories. So I had Mountain House chili mac and beef, added the black bean flakes, a third of a cup of that, and now it's 705 calories. So that's good. And then they sell these individual single serve olive oil packs. So, yeah, I mean, you could put a bunch of olive oil in a bottle, but I didn't want things to maybe leak out and get all over the place. So I just got a bunch of these individual packs and any meal that I saw was a little light with calories. I just added one of these with it. So when I make it, I'll just dump this in. This is around 90 calories for one of these packages and it's three eighths of a fluid ounce. So you, there's not really no weight associated with it. So that's good. All right, what else, what else? Oh, this is good too. This trail mix. I live in New York and I live by a Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has an amazing selection of dehydrated fruit and nuts and stuff like that. So what I did was I got this trail mix that it comes prepackaged already. You could buy prepackaged if you just wanted to maybe throw a couple of these in your bag or you can buy like a whole bag and just scoop it out as you want. But I got this. And then they got, I got banana chips. I got coconut strips. These coconut strips are a quarter cup, 200 calories. So that's a really good find. I think in each one of these bags, so this bag is 510 calories. So just a really good, uh, good mixture of stuff. And that Trader Joe's food section is, it's really a good find. Something else that I'm bringing that I would recommend is this product, it's called Salt Sticks. It's a, uh, it's a electrolyte tablet. So if I'm doing a hard push like up a hill, I might chew a couple of these before I actually do it. I've been using these for the last couple of years and I haven't noticed any muscle cramping or fatigue since I've been using them. So highly recommended. I think uh, like six a day, I think I gave myself. So I got a bunch just stashed in my resupply buckets. So something else that I did was if you go to the, like the boar's head section, they have those, like salami links or whatever with the cheese. So I ended up getting a, a five inch link of that and cut it up and vacuum sealed it so that it stayed fresh. And then I got a block of Parmesan and uh, vacuum sealed that also. So it should be good to go for the three weeks it's gonna be inside the resupply package. But I think I broke it up into fourths, 256 calories for a quarter of that and then 314 calories for the cheese. So that's got a lot of calories, some beef jerky, same thing. Just threw that in here, 140 calories. So I ended up vacuum sealing uh, that meat stuff. And then I vacuum sealed some of these tortillas. This is funny because what I originally did was I put like four of them in here. And what happens is when it takes out all the air, they basically just compressed four of them down right on top of each other. So it was just a really big, thick mess. So it's a good thing that I checked it first before I, uh, before I shipped it out. I was reading online about it after that and someone recommended putting a strip of wax paper between each uh, tortilla shell. So now that they don't bind to one another. So that's what I did. There's four in this one and then I got a couple more. I think I got one tortilla shell per day so that I kind of, you know, once again, make some wraps or whatever like that. Got a bunch of different selections just, you know, to try and help break up the monotony of each day. I don't know if I was going to get sick of eating the same thing every day for three weeks straight. So just a couple different food options to help, uh, help me along the trail. All right. So now all the food's laid out. So now we got to get it to where I'm going. So what my plan is, is there are four resupply spots along the trail that I'm going to be utilizing. The first one's in Tuolumne Meadows. The next one is going to be in Reds Meadow. The one after that's going to be at Muir Trail Ranch. And the one after that is going to be in Onion Valley. What this does is it allows me to pack a little bit lighter because I don't have to carry an extended amount of food and I could pick up my supplies along the trail. So when I start, I'm carrying four days worth of food and that's going to get me up to Tuolumne Meadows. 
I'm still tossing around the idea of either shipping it out to Tuolumne Meadows or bringing it with me and stashing it myself because up until this point, I was concerned that the snow was an issue out there because Tioga Road, where Tuolumne Meadows, the post office is over there, it's been closed. And I still think it's actually closed now, but it should be open by the time that I leave. So I was concerned that it wasn't going to be open and I was going to have to carry it with me. But um, what my plan was, because I'm flying into Mammoth Lakes and taking a yard shuttle, which is the shuttle that runs into Yosemite Valley, I'm going to get off in Tuolumne Meadows and they have bear boxes available by the Wilderness Center in uh, Tuolumne Meadows. So instead of actually shipping it out to me to the post office, I may just bring that resupply with me on the plane and then stash it myself and then just continue on into the valley after that. So that's something that I'm still going to debate over the next couple days of what I want to do. After that, so the, so the first four days will get me up to Tuolumne Meadows. Then from Tuolumne Meadows, I head down to Red's Meadow. That's around four days. And I think I have a zero day thrown in there. Then from Reds, I go to Muir Trail Ranch or MTR. That's going to be four days. And Muir Trail Ranch to Onion Valley is going to be around a five and a half day carry. So that's my biggest stretch uh, without a resupply. And then Onion Valley over to Whitney and then down to Whitney Portal is going to be around four days also. So for my last resupply, I'm actually getting off the John Muir Trail and going into Independence, California, where I'm staying at the Mount Williamson Motel. They have a hiker service that they have available where they pick up your package from the post office. Uh, they give you a room and a ride to and from the trailhead. So I didn't want to carry the 10 plus days worth of food going over Whitney. And uh, this will just be a way to break up the last leg of the trip. So I'm not carrying uh, too, many, too much stuff at one time. So how am I carrying my food? On the John Muir Trail in the national park areas, you have to have a bear canister. There's a certain section in the middle of the trail that you don't need a bear can, but for the majority of trail you do, so I'm just gonna end up carrying one. One of my concerns was getting a bear can that was gonna fit the amount of food that I needed from Muir Trail Ranch to Onion Valley, because that was my longest stretch. So I laid it all out and I ended up being able to fit it all into a barricade weekender. I was able to get five days worth of food into the barricade weekender with a little bit of room to spare. So what I'm going to do is when I get to Muir Trail Ranch, I'm going to put the five days worth of food in here. And then I think that there's a little bit extra food, but that's going to be my first day's food that I'm going to eat that particular day. So that doesn't have to be in the bear can because I'm going to eat it before the day comes to an end and then put everything else that I need to inside of this. I put reflective tape on it just in case a bear does come by and knock at it and knocks it down. I could take my headlamp and then shine it around and see the reflective tape so that way I know where it rolled off to. And another thing I did was I put a piece of duct tape on the top and then a little string onto a quarter. So that way I don't have to go fishing around for anything to open it up. This is right here, ready to go on top of the can. And the last thing that I want to talk about is just the resupply bucket or how I'm going to mail it out. So Muir Trail Ranch recommends that you put all your food or your resupply into one of these five gallon buckets. Because when they store it, they're gonna, uh, they don't want mice or other rodents getting to it. They want something that's going to stand up uh, instead of a box or something like that. So I went to Lowe's. Lowe's sells these five gallon buckets and they also sell them with a lid. So I put the lid on top and then something else that I saw that was recommended was if you get try and get something that can you can identify easy when you see your package because everything's going to look the same. So I just got some of this uh, digital camo duct tape that I'm going to tape up the lid with so that I kind of know it's mine. You'll have a label on it so that'll help you out but just to make sure like to pick it out of a crowd you know that this is going to be on it. And some of the other items that I have in my resupply bucket I just have some of these Odaproof bags, some Ziploc bags, uh, putting a water bottle in so that way, you know, if something happens to my water bottle, I have another one ready for me. Those tortilla shells. Uh, I got a thing of hot chocolate. I have some of those salt sticks. I made up a bunch of these little survival packs that just have like band-aids, uh, some antiseptic wipes, some pills like Aleve and Benadryl and stuff like that. I got some wipes per resupply, some Dr. Bronner soap, some hand sanitizer, insect repellent, 
some sunscreen, body glide, Luco tape, chapstick, toothpaste, the Muir Trail Ranch resupply label, spare spoon in case I need it. I have the Tom Harrison maps for the sections that I'm going to be doing for the resupply, to resupply, and then last but not least, all right. So, so on the John Muir Trail, you have to pack out your toilet paper. When you get to the Whitney, Mount Whitney area, they actually issue a wag bag, which is a uh, bio bag that you actually have to poo into and take out your waste. So it is what it is. It's the area. If everyone were doing their business in the area, it would just be a cesspool of, of uh, human waste. So I get it. It's, it is what it is. So what I was originally planning on doing was just bringing like uh, one of those odor-proof bags, adding some baking soda into it, and then just putting the TP in there and calling it a day. But while I was looking around online, I saw these restop, rest stop two bags. And basically what this is, is it's a bio bag. And let me show you what I did. It is a, so it comes with a little pack of toilet paper, uh, some hand wipes, and I think that's it. Because I'm bringing stuff this already, I didn't need this, so I'm getting rid of that. It is this Mylar bag, and then it has another inner liner bag in it. And inside the inner liner bag is some, I, I, I guess it's like baking soda so to make the calm the smell down. So I got these. When I got it in the mail, I, I it's a little bit overkill for what I think that I need. I probably could could have just got away with these odor-proof bags, but I got them, so I'm going to use them. But what I ended up doing, because I'm not planning on doing my business in it, I just wanted to hold my TP. I just ended up cutting this part off. I got rid of that, and now every day that I got to do my business. I'll just open it up, I'll throw the toilet paper in there, cinch down that one bag, and then this is just like a Ziploc closure, and then close that down and probably just throw it into the back of my backpack. Uh, and then that's it, I got one of these, so that's something else that, uh, that is in each resupply bucket. So that is my food and resupply strategy for the John Muir Trail. If there's anything that you think I should be adding to my resupply buckets, please let me know. If there's a food idea that you like that you want to comment with also, please do that as well. This is Nick with Triple Nickel Outdoors. Get out there.